Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Video True Nerd, and welcome back to Civilization 6, but not the same Civilization 6 we featured on the channel before, because this here is the brand new version coming to Xbox and PS4 tomorrow that I've managed to get my hands on just a little bit early, because uh, any excuse to play some more Civilization 6, to be honest. And this does rather seem to be in vogue at the moment, doesn't it? Moving over Grand Strategy 4X games uh, from PC to console, trying to make them work. Stellaris did this just a few months ago, now Civ 6 is giving it a go. Though I should say Civ 6 has actually been out on the Switch for quite some time. But this new version on Xbox and PS4, I've got to say, this here is the new gold standard for how you should move a PC game over to console. And let's start off with my favourite thing in the world, uh, being incredibly boring and talking about numbers, because if you go to Steam today and buy Civilization 6 on PC, it's going to cost you £50 uh, for the base game. Then there's a whole bunch of leader packs, those cost like a few pounds up to nine, depending on how many leaders and whatever are included in them. Then there's two big expansions, Rise and Fall for £25, uh, Gathering Storm for £35. So you've got to drop £110 on Civilization 6 on the PC if you want the full version with none of the extra leaders. This version, Civilization 6 on Xbox One, the particular one I'm playing today, that's £45 for the base game, but they also toss in some extra leaders. There we go, there's Macedon, there's Persia over there, there's Australia, there's Poland. On the PC version, you'd have to buy those separately. In the console version, those just come included, and I think the PS4 version gets even more. I'm pretty sure they get Indonesia and Nubia on top of those, so you're getting a bunch of leaders tossed in for free, even though you're paying less for the base game. And on top of that, the expansion pass on console, containing both Rise and Fall and Gathering Storm, is just over £30. So you pay less than you'd pay for Gathering Storm on PC for both Gathering Storm and Rise and Fall. So honestly, I'd say that's actually a pretty good deal. Though I should say, of course, on PC, there will be a lot more regular sales going on and probably more deep discounts than you'll find on console. But still, I'd say that's reasonable pricing. And on top of that, unlike Stellaris, which kind of booted the game back a bit, I believe on console Stellaris is still on version 1.7, they've definitely got to 2.0, so doesn't have the reworks for hyperlanes or planets, you're playing a very old version of the game. This version of Civ 6 is completely up to date, I double checked this, because the last major update on PC was September of this year, adding a couple of balance changes. Those changes are represented in this version. Like, for example, the Terra map. That was introduced in PC this last September, and it is present and correct on the console version. And on top of that, you're getting a full game in another big way as well, which is Stellaris had to make some cuts on consoles. You could only have a galaxy that was a certain size, a certain number of empires, diddly diddly d. The sliders were a lot more restrictive. Not present in Civilization VI. So if you want to have a huge map with 20 civilizations and 24 city-states on it, you flipping go for it. The game is totally cool with that. So naturally, that's what we're going to be doing. And let's just go for a good all-rounder on this occasion. So yeah, Korea. Very, very good Civ here. Plenty of science. So uh, yeah, mines can receive bonus science, which is very, very good indeed. And on top of that, yeah, their science district basically just produces... Uh, Tons of science, which is its job, but like, you know, even more than normal. I like Korea. Korea's a good all-rounder. And naturally, of course, I'm going to be playing a deity game where there's going to be 20 civs and 24 city-states on the archipelago map where there's going to be less lands to go around. So uh, this is just asking for trouble, but screw it. Let's see how long I can survive. Now, of course, that's not to say the game's perfect. There are some issues. One in particular is uh, the load times. Like, Sean Bean's already done reading out all of that, and we're still loading. PC load times are already a bit on the extreme side. Uh, naturally, the console version is going to be worse. So, uh, does take a fair while for the game to actually start. So, how does Civ 6 work with a controller? Well, probably better than you might expect, because just like Stellaris, I think they've done a really good job coming up with a mechanism that works. So, camera gets moved around with the right stick. Meanwhile, the left stick moves around your cursor. But the real star is the X button, which takes the role of the take me to the next thing that needs to be done button over on PC. So if I just give that a tap, it takes me to my settler. So once I've got my settler, I can simply move the camera around, start investigating, zoom in and out with left and right trigger. And then, yeah, when I want him to actually go somewhere, use the left stick to indicate where I theoretically would like him to move. Alternatively, if I don't want him to move anywhere, but instead would like him to be, you know, doing something where he's standing, I use the D-pad to go through the options underneath the settler. So put him to sleep, pass this turn, move, found a city exactly where you're standing. Alternatively, if I decide I don't want to do anything with him right now, 
just tap X again, and we move straight over to the warrior. Same basic deal, so fortify, start moving around, pass your turn, diddly diddly day. So yeah, it all works nice and smoothly for the most part. In fact, I was almost surprised how easily I got into it, so... Uh, Okay, this sort of looks pretty decent. There's some mountains around for potentially a good little science district. Yeah, let's just actually uh, move you. Hang on, yeah, Mr. Warrior. Move on to the top of the hill. Let me see what's going on. Nothing too sexy going on over there, so... Okay, we would have ourselves... Yeah, this spot right here would be next to a river. Fresh water. There'd be tea right there. Tea is not the worst thing in the world. And tea also provides, yeah, two food immediately. Though, yeah, you can actually settle on top of a luxury and you will gain the benefit of the luxury. But that means you can't work the tile. And sometimes work luxuries are really good tiles. The game's also indicating, yeah, this might be a nice spot right there. Run into the coffee. That's culture. But no, if tea gives me science, I want tea, damn it. So you're going to go uh, right there. You're going to settle a city immediately because uh, why the flip not, eh? There we go. So, uh, foreign trade. So, uh, I've discovered another continent. Well, that was easy. Now, next up, the game is going to prompt me with the X button to select science. So, I can just do that automatically. But, there's also, yeah, the really nice system, very similar again to the one in Stellaris, where you can use left and right button to actually activate side menus. So, over on the right button, you've got stuff related to city-states, wind conditions, when the time is right, that'll be where the World Congress goes diddly diddly d. Alternatively, on the left, you've got yourself your science, your culture, your great people, your governors, your timeline, and your climate stuff. So yeah, all makes an awful lot of sense, but for the most part, you only need to bother with that, because the X button will just take you there when you need to get there. Obviously, you've still got your full technology tree, and if you just want to kind of learn a bit more, you'll be able to figure out, yeah, what you're unlocking, what the benefits of what you're doing are, diddly diddly d. Now, I do have that lovely T right there. So I wouldn't mind getting working on that sooner rather than later. So go on, as that opens up, yes, yeah, science district and also the plantation, let's get pottery underway. That's nice and good there. That'll be happening. Need to actually select myself something to be working on too. So yeah, districts, that's just the monument or units. Now... I will say, I suspect because the UI has to be bigger, because the assumption is you might be, you know, sitting back on a sofa far away from your TV next to a PC, yeah, this screen's gonna get, um, crowded, because it's already full, and it's turn one. Anyway, let's get out a scout for the time being. Scout never flippin' hurts. And other than that, yeah, we're probably just gonna be passing by some turns very, very quickly indeed. Though, uh, we're gonna run into somebody sooner rather than later, because... As I say, there's not much land available on the archipelago maps, and there's 20 civs and 24 city-states, so uh, they're going to be somewhere nearby. So, straight over to my warrior. Just start having a bit of a looksy round. Okay, so we've got a bit of an open plain over there. Bit more land up here. This is not a bad land mass at all for archipelago. Sometimes you can get some really, really narrow slithers of land. So this is, uh, this is okay. This will flip in do for now, so... Uh, yeah, just very quickly uh, check my town here. I assume we're working the T right now, right? So yeah, just like with the units, you can just go backwards and forwards with this menu back here. So yes, I can see we are working the city centre, of course. And on top of that, the T. So double food, one production, one science. So we are getting bonus science in right now and only one production. So that's why, yeah, we're a little bit slow on the actual scout production. But pottery should be done sooner rather than later. I could if I wanted to... Yeah, basically force the game to work this marsh. That's three food, but I'm giving up one production. Now, I'm happier with the science. That's absolutely fine. It's probably not optimal, but that's A-OK. -okay. Keep time moving along here. We got more coffee up top, which is not the worst thing in the world. And even more tea. Okay, if I get myself some nice duplicates, that's not the worst thing in the world at all. And I can just trade them away for big old piles of money. So you just start... There's so much tea. Okay, We've spawned in flipping T Central, I'm loving it. Okay, just heading further and further south, we have got one, a hell of a mountain range running down this island over here. And actually, yeah, there might be uh, some really, really good science districts here. Like this spot right here, that is one hell of a science district right there. And if we set up a new city over here, oh yeah, there might be some real nice ones. And actually, we've also got, that's a geothermal thing over there. Okay. If we can get, say, one city down over here and get one settler over onto that little island, whatever that is precisely, we could be swimming in some early game science, flipping loving it. 
So just keep time moving on here. About to hit population two, and two turns away from a scout as well. Now we do have some barbarians though, but that's fine. If we can just take them out right now, that's fine, Sean Bean. Pottery is indeed a thing that exists. And okay, do I want to try and rush to the science district? Or do I want to rush to... Uh, yeah, I want to start farming that tea. We need the flipping tea. And uh, if I farm a resource, that will be boosted. Okay. Let's get that underway, because sooner or later I will meet another civilization. There has to be one around here flipping somewhere. So once I meet another civ, that'll actually boost writing. So let's get that done first, because 12 turns, I should be able to boost that as well. Right, you, start mopping up these scouts, because you should be able to very, very easily beat up this guy. Okay, scouts out, now we can start doing some exploring. So districts and building, ooh, granary. Granary's not the worst thing in the world, but... Uh, Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Give me some information here. How are we doing on housing? We should be fine for housing for now, surely. Yeah, six housing for two. We don't need to rush towards that at all. Okay, builder in six or settler in ten. Okay, while I would not mind the settler... Oh, the builder would be great, though. Because then I could actually farm a resource. And I haven't run into any little... Okay, before I make my decision... Before I make my decision, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep exploring and we're going to look for a little village. And if we're really lucky, there's a village. Spot on. Now, if you were to give me a builder, that's like my favourite thing to be given. If you're given a builder, being given a builder is great. You, meanwhile, just start heading over here into... Okay, that's a flipping nice district spot too. There are nice district spots everywhere. And yeah, no one's coming from that direction. That's C and mountains. Okay, so our flank's pretty bloody safe, all things considered. Though there might be some more stuff to the north. Right, you go up north, explore that, but that's going to be our nice dry, dusty campus region right there. Okay, I've got to go for a settler first. Get the settler in play. Nice thing about this position, actually, is yeah, because we've now got all of these mountains here, whatever's going on with this bandit, he needs to come all the way around here to find me. So he's very unlikely to make it that far. That should be not a problem. And come on, builder, 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 and knowledge of sailing. Okay, I guess that'll do too. And wow, there's a lot of land down here. Okay, together with that's gypsum, uh, together with some wheat. Not bad. Not bad, you know. Okay, we've lucked out on the spawn here. This is nice. Though I will say it's almost suspiciously too quiet a minute. Oh! Hello! Who's that is that? Aha! Arabia! Okay, you guys for the most part aren't like the biggest dicks in the world, so that's fine. And there is Baghdad right there. Okay, so they're down in this part of the world, but shouldn't be a major problem. They're very lucky to expand, by the way. They probably have... Actually, they might well have already put down some of their cities, so maybe they've not got any settlers left at this point. Though it's very likely they'll be the ones to take this little plane over here. And aha, uh -huh. we found the bandit camp, but they're moving in to intercept. But if I get lucky, I might be the one to actually do the finishing blow. If I could be the one to get the finishing blow, that'd be great. Okay, don't need to worry about them. It's a very long, difficult journey to get to me. And up north, we've got, aha, uh -huh. we must be close to the top of the map here. There's a bit of snow and uh, another village too. Okay, we might well have a chance to get ourselves some more builders yet. And also, just notice, yeah, we got double coffee and triple T. This is going to be a very caffeinated society. Right, go and grab that, and uh, do we actually just get... Oh, it was a recon unit! I saw we spawned something, but sadly it was a recon unit. You know what? Recon unit's fine as well. Go over here, make sure there's... Does that loop round? I think that loops round, actually. Yeah, with a mountain and a geothermal fissure thing right there, that could be a good spot for the settler too. I need to find the right spot, because... Uh, down over in this direction, not bad. Then again, no real luxuries in this area. A couple of bonus resources with the cows and the sheep and the fish, but nothing too sexy or exciting, really. And maybe start bringing my warrior home because, uh, yeah, we do clearly have another camp up here in the snow somewhere. And hello, we've got ourselves a natural wonder. That gets me astrology booster, which is very, very nice indeed. And yeah, we got ourselves some good science spots up here. Okay, interesting because uh, does that technically count as like a mountain uh, for the sake of putting down a really nice campus somewhere around here okay code of laws is done so naturally plus one production and bonus against barbarians as they're floating around at the minute and okay do we want to have foreign trade or craftsmanship 
remind me. So that actually gets me, yeah, a couple of policies over there. I can get the details of that if I want to. Let's do craftsmanship first, because, yeah, I feel like I'm not lucking out with the builders so far. So, uh, get that sorted out for the time being, and, uh, okay. You, down over here, start hunting down this guy. He's trapped away from his camp, and I think his camp's dead right now anyway. You found a nice bit of land over here, and, oh... That's going to be another natural wonder. Right, the Matterhorn. So we've got a sciencey wonder up north and a culturally wonder down south. Okay, this is this is nice. This is a lovely starting location. Then again, I'm seeing something right here. Hello. That, I believe, is a city-state. And don't forget, grab myself one builder. Free flipping builder. Yes, that is precisely, precisely what I want to see. Oh, frap just day kalu kalay. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do with you? Because uh, right now, there's only so much we can build. We can either, yeah, demolish or we can actually get ourselves farmed. But I can't actually uh, tear down, uh, yeah, I can't tear down marsh. I think you need, uh, what is it, masonry or something for that? You can't do it yet anyway. Okay, there's a nice spot for a basic farm right over there. So you just start moving in this direction, cross the river this turn, and then what we're going to do is, yeah, for only 50, I'll buy that right now. So we can get a farm down, and then that's going to boost the basic agriculture. That's going to speed up my science quite a lot. And here we go. This scout over here seems to be trapped. Now we've got plus five versus barbarian, so he's going to be destroyed sooner rather than later. Another camp's going to be somewhere up top here. Hello, who are you and what would you like to say to me? Oh, no, that's actually the Ottomans. Hello over there. You have a lovely hat. Okay, sorry, not a city-state, proper city. Gotcha. And just keep my scouts circling around up north. No sign of that camp up there, but there must be a camp around here flipping somewhere. And you, get over there, build me a farm. And... Hang on, is it... Oh, it's harvest rather than build an improvement, isn't it? No, I remember this. It means farming as in, yes, farming uh, grain or rice. Okay, so that did literally nothing for me. Um, you, stop running, please. Get away from that scout before he comes and grabs you. Because I don't want you flipping stolen. You, meanwhile, can go and attack this scout over here. Because, yeah, with plus five, you'll easily be able to handle him. And there's that camp. Fine. We've got ourselves the barbarian camp. We now know where that's located. So, back off from that. Head down south. And we've also run into the Congo, who are going to be dicks because I don't spread religion to them. Despite the fact no one in the world has invented religion yet. But what can you do? Congo's going to Congo. And speaking of Congo Congoing, they're sadly about to Congo all over this lovely Matterhorn and geothermal fissure area. So that's a shame. Now, my settler's ready. The thing is, uh, what are we going to do? Because, yeah, there's going to be loyalty penalties uh, from trying to settle this area just because there are too many cities. Because on Deity, uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of them. Oh, yeah, that's going to be pretty severe. Okay, I feel like we should head up to the cold north up here. Try and get ourselves uh, some of that sweet, sweet science. This spot up here close by to the coffee is probably the best because, uh, actually, hang on. I was to be here, I'd have, uh, yeah, long-range access to that right there. We'd have ourselves the deer. We'd have ourselves the coffee. Then again. Okay. That would actually put me on, ooh, somewhere around here anyway. Okay. Start the settler moving in that direction. That's fine. And get a new warrior out because, yeah, there's potentially going to be trouble and we're going to need to defend ourselves from it. Oh, this is perfect. It sounds like, yep, yeah, Congo and Arabia are at war. Good. That means they're not at war with me. And with irrigation done, we can start working on the tea. Now, warrior, finish off that lovely scout. And if you're very lucky, get yourself a level up. Perhaps that's a promotion would be great. Sadly not. Okay, but that scout's taken care of, which is marvellously good news. So the tea plantations can start going down. Oh, now that. That's looking better. Two food, one production, two gold, one science. Okay, admittedly, it's only six off one tile, which is, you know, fine but not spectacular. But I like the fact there's four separate resources. I always like there being four separate resources. 
And that extra gold will be rather useful. I can use that to, yeah, potentially start buying some stuff as I need it. Also, I'm not going to deny Congo. That is a sweet city right there. You've got geothermal fissures, another geothermal fissure right there as well. You've got a two food, two production, one tile, like straight away. Whole bunch of, ah, oh, that's going to be some lovely stuff right there. Depending on how fast you choose to try and expand and grab, ooh, okay. So as it turns out, the Ottomans have already managed to seal the foxes. Okay, this is good. I feel like there's a massive fight between the giants down here, and it's not involving me in the slightest. I'm just chilling out up here with my science, and it's great. Okay, rather than actually waiting to clear out this encampment, I could just actually settle right here. That would get me, yeah, immediate coffee beans. I'd be two away from this rather nice spot right over here. I would not, however, be in range of any of this business over here, which would be a bit of a shame, but... It would mean I had access to, uh, yeah, nice forest over here. Three away, so kind of irrelevant. It's not the best, but could do. It could do the job. I wouldn't mind being... Uh, yeah, I really wouldn't mind being just one further up right here. Let's wait till we can clear that camp. Also, I'm just going to attack the camp with my scout, which is a terrible idea, but we might just be able to make it fly. Though we do have two warriors coming in, so it's gonna be fine in the long run. Okay, here we go. Neighbor's starting to talk to me. Ottoman's willing to offer me uh, three gold a turn for 30 turns. It's not great, but the gold would be nice to have. It'll let me, yeah, uh, just buy up some stuff I need rather than having to build it. Also, a scout has someone managed to sneak up on me. Hopefully, that's a scout from this camp over here, though uh, there could be more camps. And... Uh, Campus. Okay, so, uh, campus, campus, campus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Step one, just send my scout to deal with that scout. Hopefully, that should be good enough for that. Oh, promotion. Absolutely perfect timing. Okay, so, uh, the city, the city, the city. What we need to do right now is we need to get this on board. Because that right there, that's the flipping spot. All right, that is the flipping spot. So, oh, five turns. Five flipping turns. Now, I would actually get myself, yeah, science from adjacent districts. And were there to be mines next to it, that would be good. But that's the spot. I mean, that's just sexy. Five turns for a Korean campus with, like, mountains all around it. Oh, that's just lovely. Okay, the warriors have made it up north. And at this point, they are just gonna kick the ass this little barbarian encampment, that'll be worth some gold, uh, some era points as well, because yeah, I'm at 10 out of 11 on the era points. That scout is uh, running north. Okay, which direction are you going in? Uh, you'll probably uh, be going in this direction. So you uh, just move over there. Make sure that this guy's protected. I could have settled this city so long ago, but no, I want to be on precisely this spot. I have decided. And there we go. Camp goes down. Uh, that's fairly close to my territory, so that's got to be worth some good stuff. Check the actual notifications there. Unmet city-states have been defeated. Right, so Germany's on the map somewhere. And that doesn't get me, yeah, the two era points I need to avoid a dark age. Uh, next you. Uh, move over here. Next turn, the city's going down. And I'm sure I saw you heading over in this direction. Where are you, you sneaky bastard? Hunt him down. Find me that flipping scout. We've also got ourselves progress towards mysticism. Off, yeah, some uh, random little village up here at the edge of the world. And another camp up here as well. Right, that might be where the scouts came from. Okay, deploy the soldiers up there to take care of that as soon as we're done with this business, which... We already are, so we can go and do that now. That's good. I mean, hopefully no new camps spawn down here. If they do, uh, yeah, these guys can deal with it. But here it is. The city that I absolutely shouldn't have waited for, but did anyway. Uh, welcome to... Ooh, plus three era score, because it's in a lovely, lovely site. Very close by to a wonder. Love it. I will say, there are some bits of the UI that are a little bit on the, um, the small side. Like, say, in the bottom right there, the era score is very, very small indeed for on a TV. And yeah, the top left, the plus gold, that's a little bit hard to see as well. 
and because the campus is a special district and it's just down a plus four era score. Okay, we are barreling towards a flipping golden age right now. Just four more to go. We've not even been told uh, we're close by at this point. Now, 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 now. Oh, this is, this is going to be beautiful. Right, give me some information here. How much science are we producing? Because I'm guessing it's a lot. So it turns out Seer Wands don't get any adjacency bonuses from mountains whatsoever. So basically, I think I'd be doing better right now if I weren't Korea. Marvelous. Okay, there's suddenly a lot more camps floating around actually. Like a slightly worryingly large amount of uh, camps. So okay, uh, just explore around here. In the Arctic Waste, turns out, not much good going on, but what have you. Right, this camp needs to be taken care of. Ignore this camp for the time being. We'll get back to that one. This camp needs to go down. So, you, go and give that scout a poke if you'd be so kind. That's probably going to be a stalemate, but screw it, we'll heal you up later. Bring the strong, upgradable warriors back to deal with this nonsense. Nice thing about camps in the early game, of course, they're an easy source of era score. So actually, this should hopefully be enough to push me into, yeah, a golden age. Lovely. You know, this spot where I put a campus district where I shouldn't have put a campus district would have been a great place for a holy site. That would have been magnificent. Okay, Spearman managed to get themselves killed by charging into me. So that is, yeah, there we go. Plus three era score. Just one more to go. I'm a bit worried about you, by the way. You may be just run away from the slingers. Uh, we'll mob them up momentarily. There's a scout there as well. Shouldn't be able to do uh, too much, to be honest. But, aha. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got a plan now. I've got a really, really nice plan. So, uh, units, units, units. Buy me... A builder, please. There we go. So now I've got myself a builder. We're going to salvage this mess with the science district. Okay, what I've done is I've removed the forest that was here. Because I forgot Korea works backwards. Normally, a science district, you slap it down in such a place as the campus gets good adjacency bonuses. But Korea just provides a flat bonus and then passes adjacency onto other things. Like, for example, mines. Now that, that's more flipping like it. One food, three production, one science. Okay, and now I've remembered that, we're gonna do something nice and sexy. Because what Korea wants is a giant pile of hills. And what have we got over here? Oh my goodness, it's a giant pile of hills. Okay, cleared another encampment up north and got very, very lucky indeed because I got myself a free trade unit. So I can use that to start laying down some roads uh, between my cities right now. Jongju... Gongju and Gang Yang. Okay, we might want to come up with like some slightly more distinctive names, so I'm gonna start getting confused sooner or later. And the world enters the class Calera, but more importantly, I have entered a golden age. Flipping love it. Right, so I'm in a golden age. You losers aren't. Good stuff. Okay, not a great selection for me because yeah, I don't really um have faith. Like, literally none. I've not got a single point of faith the entire game. So, uh, I guess, culture for speciality. Alternatively, uh, hmm, gold adjacency provides science as well. Yeah, you know what, go for it. We'll have commercial hubs sooner or later. Like, you know, hopefully. Okay, step one. Once again, start tearing down forests on hills uh, to get a massive production in. That means we can jump straight up to the Sayer one. I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sorry. But that means also... Uh, Oh, look at this. Hills, hills, more flipping hills. Okay, I just went to get a cup of tea. I came back, reloaded the game, and... Were these horses always here? Because I swear these horses were not here. But more importantly, oh, the mines. The mines, the mines, the mines, all right? Here we flipping go. That's looking a bit better, gang -nang. Though I can't deny we're stuck in a bit of a ghoulish state of, yeah, barbarian whack-a-mole. At this point, there are three camps dotted around the Arctic Waste and another that's just flipping sprung up here. So, uh, yeah, we're, um, we're slightly struggling to keep on top of it. Okay, so my dreams of a beautiful scientific community where we just, you know, hung out by ourselves up in the north, in territory where nobody wanted, where we just, like, you know, studied mines and mountains and... Snow, I guess, is, um, is not working out because the flipping barbarian jerks keep showing up and there's, um, there's quite a few of them. I'll admit, we haven't really, um, been, uh, keeping up 
with the camps. There's a lot of them. So uh, this one unit of warriors is going to hopefully be doing a good job. I'm rushing to swords as fast as I can because I do have iron. I don't know where it's coming from, but I do have it. So that's nice. That's nice indeed. So we've got a tiny bit of iron going on. That's just flipping lovely. But uh, yeah, this one down here is also just spawned uh, double warriors and my warrior here is... Okay, cancel the library. We don't actually need libraries right now. We need, like, something else. Like, we're not actually ready with, um, archers yet. No, we don't have archers yet. Great. Oh, yeah, they're moving in. Can we take this? Is my... Nope, that warrior's dead. Okay, so the capital is completely undefended. We've got a river, which is nice, but... Oh, they're about to take the tea! Not the tea. Oh, there's also horsemen. That's good. Uh, there's horsemen because no one ever bothered dealing with this camp down over here. Okay, that one's not on me. Seriously, you guys should be dealing with that. That is more your problem than mine. Okay, one thing I can do. I can convert one of my warriors to an actual proper swordsman. He's still massively badly damaged, but it's probably still my best Bet you can get over here in one turn. Right, you just flipping flee. Uh, if we're lucky, this swordsman healing up can save this city. This city, meanwhile, is just being picked apart by everything. Okay, you just hide in here and uh, just try and hold the city as best you can. This city, meanwhile, oh, this city's just screwed. Ah, joke's on you. We weren't using that farm anyway. Okay, it turns out they've also got swordsmen. So, my plan of don't worry, just wait six turns will be fine. Probably not gonna work out because they've actually already got a swordsman. Well, technically their camp is actually right next to, uh, yeah, an iron mine. Or rather, at least, you know, a source of iron. So, fair enough, I suppose. Fair or flip enough. Oh, bloody hell. Right, so... <laughs> Best bet we've got really is, I guess, hopefully they don't cross the river. I mean, we'll keep the science safe in the completely pointless wrong location I put it in. Because I forgot what Korea did and didn't, you know, read the tooltip. Okay, I did not need a crippling blizzard right now, alright? Things were going badly enough. We're already being killed by barbarians, though, in all fairness, I probably shouldn't have settled in the Arctic Circle. Obviously, that didn't hurt the barbarians in any way whatsoever. No, it's just screwing over me and my people. Okay, swordsman, I know you're a bit on the weak side, but you are like, you know, swords people. So, yeah, start just basically chopping these bastards down. There we go. That's the stuff. That's the stuff right there. Maybe we'll flip and survive for today at least. Oh, God, no, the tea. Okay, so I think the storm's actually swept in and just wiped out some of the barbarians, which is good, but on the downside... It's also wiped out literally everything else. This is one a hell of a flipping storm. Okay, so the barbarians, having burnt down the tea, are now heading north to take out this completely undefended city as well. Great. The storm has dissipated, though. This is actually the one moment the storm would have been useful. If you could have, like, you know, finished off these guys, uh, that would have been flipping great. There's not even any buildings here. We haven't built anything here. We just built this place up because we had dreams of taking advantage of the local science. Then a blizzard came in and ate everything. Okay, if anyone asks, I was playing as Congo. Alright, because look at them. They're building really nice fancy stuff. And that's going to have a beautiful view of my empire on fire. While they just kind of point and laugh and eat popcorn. Yes, I feel like this deity game is not actually, um... Not really worked out as well for me as the great big livestream deity series we did. This has not worked out as well. But, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, as we look upon the smouldering ruins of what should have been a beautiful, wonderful, scientific powerhouse, I think you get the point, because this here is Civilization VI, except on console. And I'll say, for the most part, it runs very well. It's very, very smooth indeed. Frame rate seems uh, nice and high, but... I haven't played long enough to know what it's like in the late game. Once the map starts getting crowded, I don't know if performance might start going down a bit. But it does seem nice and smooth and lovely so far. It works fairly well in terms of controls and whatnot. That all seems to, you know, fit together pretty nicely, all things considered. Though I will say, yeah, the UI can sometimes be a little bit on the small side. I mean, they've done their best. They've done their best, but some bits are certainly a bit, you know, squinty. Like the era score and the plus gold and whatnot. I do find myself squinting at some of that little bit. So, uh, you know what? They've done probably 
about as good a job as they could do. And I think, you know, for a game that's only just been released on consoles, they've put together what's a pretty good package for it in terms of pricing. So, uh, yeah, take that as a recommendation if you will. If you've always enjoyed the Civ 6 videos or whatnot, and you don't have a PC for it or what have you, might well be worth a look-see. This comes out tomorrow. I just got my hands on it a little bit early. So, yeah, might well be worth a look-see for the right person. But I'm not going to say it's better than the PC version. Absolutely it's not. If you do have a PC that can play this, it's definitely easier with a mouse and keyboard, but they have done as good a job as I think they could reasonably be expected to. Definitely a better job than I did building the Korean Empire. So, I am sure we will have some more Civ 6 at some point, ladies and gentlemen. I do love it. So, whenever they get round to any new expansions or what have you, we will have it back on the channel. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Civilization 6. Thank you very much, and goodbye. You know, I really hope we've agreed open borders with Japan, by the way. Otherwise, they have basically just invaded. I may have picked the wrong fight over... Yep. And my sisters, of course, have got even more flipping high-tech, though mysteriously still completely dependent on, you know, an aqueduct. Now, I'm not saying your entire army is mostly already dead, but it kind of actually is.